All right, welcome to International Estimates, the official booster show of the U.S. Census. And now, the only way of getting accurate information about U.S. data. We bring you the numbers behind the numbers, and I'm joined by my China correspondent, senior China correspondent now, Luigi De Janeiro. <laughs> Hi, Luigi. Hello. How are you doing? Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for the 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 character inflation. Senior correspondent. One would say our only correspondent. How is Very China true. doing this week? Um, you know, it's all right. Yeah. Can't complain. Are people, is there uh, toilet paper now? There's always been toilet paper. Didn't didn't hit China like it hit the rest of the world in was terms of toilet, toilet paper. paper. Was the toilet paper panic though? No, and I think that's because people understand in China that you are very responsible for your own toilet paper, even in public. If you recall, you never you never go to a public washroom without your own toilet paper. I do, and Luigi is referencing my own experience in China as well. So in a way, we're both China correspondents. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> in another way, neither of us are. Okay. Very so. true. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about, though, like, I have plenty of things in my house that could be toilet paper if I didn't put them in the toilet. Like Americans obviously have this idea that you have to put it in the toilet, but you can always throw it out. Like there's plenty of things you can just toss. So, you know, but not everyone's got toilet paper. Everyone's happy or they bought those industrial rolls that are like 3000 sheets around, um, which there's plenty of lying around too, because no one's using them. It was, yeah, it's, it's strange to me that people would panic about toilet paper because, I mean, you could always just step into the shower. <laughs> That's a beautiful uh, <laughs> step into <It's>, the shower. <laughs> but, I mean, it's true. No, it's yeah, not, you're, you're right, you're right. Like, shower heads. What, it's what, a free bidet. That's yeah. right. I never understood that panic. Okay, I always imagined so, it was like old European women. Speaking of shitty conversation, let's mm-hmm. move on to um, the two previous questions we asked before. So if I'm looking through my old notes, the previous question, the main question we asked was, how many signatures or autographs has Topher Grace given in Nebraska? Now, it turns out that our, so our range was between 50 and 100 autographs total in Nebraska. We thought maybe he'd be in, in an airport once, you know, he'd been overwhelmed. Now, I did some medium digging. Topher Grace can sign 25, 50 autographs in one stroll. I watched videos of him walk and sign at a pace that I didn't think was possible. But (laughs) there's no evidence, zero evidence, that he's ever been to Nebraska, mentioned Nebraska, had any contact with Nebraska. He, contrary to popular belief, is not from Wisconsin, but from Westchester, New York. So he has almost no reason to go to Nebraska. Therefore, I'm putting his likely number at zero autographs. Shocking. Now, fun fact, according to Bing, Tover Grace is one of the most popular, popularly searched celebrities in Nebraska, right behind Wyoming. The other question we asked. (laughs) How do you find that out? That's insane. Bing does uh, popularity searches. So like, oh my God. How, and Tover Grace is near 100. In, in, in like a scale of 0 to 100, Tover Grace is uh, one of the top celebrities. Did that influence the question then? No. Um, that had no influence on the question. It was strange. Biased. Yeah. Strange, <laughs> strange coincidence. Um, well, the way we'll do things is that one of us is going to give a location and one of us is going to give a question. So okay. it, it's randomized. Um, right. And then the other question was, how many moose have entered and, you know, taken habitat in homes around Mount Rushmore? Now, this is a tough question. We thought it was going to be around zero, one moose. But the thing is, is that there's about 600 homes, many of them rental properties, many of them probably vacant around the Mount Rushmore area. And, well, there are little to no native moose in South Dakota. Every year, there are a few from North Dakota and Wyoming that move around the area. So there's a decent chance there is one to maybe, you know, a piddling half a moose in Mount Rushmore. And there are your estimates. Okay, 
Now on to our own questions. Luigi, do you want to go first or should I? Um, why don't you go first, just so I absolutely understand how I should ask a question. <laughs> okay. So Luigi, give me a location. Los Angeles. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's a good location for this question. <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> and, you know, what we're going to do here is we're going to walk through the methodology. So you don't just have to give me a number. Like, give me your reasoning. Give me how you get to your number. <laughs> Okay. 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 Yeah. The, the numbers behind the numbers. Right. Luigi, from your uh, outpost in China, where in China again? Uh, Hefei City. Ah, yes. The, the most important in, uh, <laughs> data yeah, collection. Right. In, in Anhui <laughs> province, which, which to put into perspective, I guess would be two hours west of Shanghai. By train? By train. By speed train. Okay. The Fertile Crescent of China. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from your outpost on the far west, in terms of west coast of uh, LA, sure. How many people in LA have, during this coronavirus, put away <laughs> their <laughs> put away their leather toys for the season <laughs> in re in resignation of the next few months? Okay. What? Just in practicality, it doesn't matter the emotion, but people that have made the decision that these leather toys are going in the closet. <laughs> okay. All right. You ready? You ready? I think, I think you're going to hate me for this, but I think zero. Oh, okay. Tell <laughs> All right. Walk me through. Well, I think it's LA and I think it's a pretty liberal place. And if everyone's locked down, I mean, isn't it, isn't it, you know, common knowledge or a truth universally acknowledged that when people have nothing to do, they have a lot of sex? Yes. That's, so that's there are, my assumption. <laughs> okay. Well, I think zero is definitely understating it because there's definitely couples that are like, well, we're not putting away our leather toys. But there's also certainly single people that while dominatrix is in bed, are cautious ah. with their head. Yep. Well, that's very true. Ah, oh, see, I never thought of that. I just had this you gotta think about the, the single title, swingers. Entitled people from LA. Well, <sighs> there's definitely some people that have um, refused to put away their, their toys, either because they're optimistic or yep. because they're simply disobeying rules. Especially in LA, you drive between locations. What are the police going to say? This isn't your home, you know. Is everyone in LA, is LA like, is LA locked down? No one can go out and socialize? People can go out. I I mean, people are not supposed to socialize, but people, um, so like uh, Rodeo Drive is like, all the shops are empty. People aren't really walking the streets, but you can drive there and, you know, walk for exercise as long as you keep a safe distance. So people are yeah. still to a much lesser degree moving around. People aren't going to work for the most part. <clears throat> right. I don't see, I don't want to say I'm, I don't think I'm being cynical in saying that zero people are doing this. I think, I mean, maybe they're like, are there just like kinky Puritans who decide not to? <laughs> that just doesn't Puritans, make sense to me. They're safe. That's they, the, okay. That's, so, so I think you have to understand that there are plenty of people who are like to spice things up in the bedroom but have a cautious personality. Right, yeah, and they're not, that, it's, it's bad, it's really foolish of me to, to assume, you know, if you have leather toys, you're depraved and can't resist your <laughs> urges. <laughs> okay. Or, or you're brave. <laughs> or you're brave. You're or maybe depraved. that's, maybe, maybe, or maybe you're really kinky and you're into like pathology play. You're like, now's my chance yeah, to risk are, everything. <laughs> people are taking their, their, their leather toys out of the closet. Right? <laughs> and they're like, this yeah. is my chance. The time there there are definitely some life. people that, um, you know, let, let's say someone who's like 25 um, and is young and strong and healthy, but they're not super attractive. They're not like anyone's, you know, top, top person. Um, but 
now that there's a lot less fish in the sea, they're like, this is my chance. Like, people are more desperate for what I have to offer. Oh, yeah, definite opportunists. Yeah, that's a good point. So, okay. so yeah, I mean, couples, there's it, couples that live together, there's no reason to get rid of their toys. Um, uh-uh. But, you know, there's, <laughs> unless it's really, you just bummed out by it. I'm sure there's at least one couple in LA that's like, ah, I'm just not in the mood now. Reading Very the New true. York Times just gets me down. <laughs> okay. Hmm. So I guess, how many people do you think have leather toys in LA? Yeah. 90%? That's really that's, I'd like to, I know, right? I'd like to believe that. If that's what popular culture makes me think. Um, definitely not. Definitely not. 50, I think, is even too much. Oh, that's tough. I'm going to say it's probably a really low percentage. Relative, because there's like, what, 4 million people in LA. Maybe yeah. 2 million of those people are over 18. I don't know the exact number. I think people in LA are pretty liberal. I can't speak for like the religious population, the Christians who abstain. <laughs> um, There's definitely Christians that are like are more likely to have leather toys though. Yeah, that's, see, I know nothing. I know nothing. You, you, you don't get too bogged change. down in, uh, in the exceptions though. You know, let's say LA has, let's say greater LA has like 12 million people. All right. Okay. Really? Okay. Well, LA is the second biggest city in the United States. Um, and greater New York is like 20 million. So New York city has 8 million people or eight and a half million people. Greater New York has 20 million people. Are we going to go LA specific or greater LA? I was thinking just like the, the city of Los Angeles. Okay. So that's probably, I don't know, 4 million. Let's say 4 yes. million people. And you know, that's like, that's the place. That's where, well, all, the, okay, that's where all the magic happens. <laughs> In the hills, though, there's, uh, there's plenty of people. <laughs> right? So, all right. Well, we're saying, you know, the, we're saying central LA, but not like, not just set, I, LA, the, the metropolitan LA. Yes. Four million estimated. Yeah. So, you think, uh, what, 20%? Yeah. You think 15%? 10%? You think 400,000 people in LA have leather toys? I wonder if it's that. I want to say 7% pops up in my head. Okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe so that's uh, too safe. Yeah, well. I don't know. Okay, so you're going to make me do some math here. 7% is. Uh, that's like 300, almost 300,000 people. Yeah, okay. That's a lot. Yeah. Even that sounds, that seems like a lot. Okay, only 7% of it. LA. Yeah. Okay. And who knows how many people are adults? I guess the adult <laughs> population would yeah. make that number. Yeah, what about the kids that have rise. toys that happen to be leather? <laughs> <laughs> There's that too, right? Yeah. Ooh. Uh, phone cases. Yeah. Big purses. <laughs> toys. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Not everything you own is a toy. <laughs> but it could it be. can be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's 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 uh, stake out three hundred thousand. So out of our three hundred thousand leather owners, how okay. many of them are uh, planning to abstain for the season? How seriously do you think Americans are taking this uh, pandemic? Does it really affect? Are they really are they really afraid? Americans go in extremes. Um, okay. Americans will, you know, deny something for a while, and then when they become afraid of it, become, for the most part, strongly afraid of it. Okay. Okay. So then I'm going to infer that. Especially, also, I should I should mention that um, in a place like LA and California, there's a strong vibe to be anti-Trump. Okay. So if Trump says. Don't worry, they're gonna worry. All right. Yeah, exactly. They're like, right. I'm on the side of science. True. Okay. Very good. In that case, I'm going to say only the really perverse, depraved people who are super rich use and use their leather toys. I like how you think it's a class thing. 
I think it is. Yeah, because they're just like power hungry and untouchable. So they just they just you know I would think the opposite. urges. I would think I'm not gonna be that. I said I I wouldn't think that highly of um a, a class struggle here because I think a lot of rich people are like, what if the poor's give me uh you know coronavirus? I that, have to defend yeah. my my stuff. In my mind, the the rich I'm thinking of are. <laughs> Are <made> like <laughs> soci- sociopathic like entertainment you know like movie producers this is know, like fucking... kinky purge like <laughs> oh. <laughs> they, they bust through your door with a giant fucking leather dildo <laughs> it's a hoax <laughs> <laughs> <Get over. laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, so wait. What's your number again? Okay. Let's just. Well, it was three hundred thousand. Was was the, the right, percentage? That's the base. <laughs> with the leather. So let's let's be let's be conservative. I'm going to say a third of that. A third hmm. of that number. So maybe a hundred thousand. A hundred thousand people that keep or put away their leather toys. Keep their leather toys. Okay. So two hundred thousand people have put away their leather toys. That was the question yeah. I was asking. Yeah. Because I um, still think. LA folk are real liberal. Uh, bodies. That feels kind of right. I mean, in a major American city that 200,000 people would put away their leather toys for the season. Um, but I think, you know, that feels right, but I'm going to raise just a little bit. I feel like it never mm-hmm. hurts to assume that there are more people with leather toys and more people that are nervous about the coronavirus. I'm okay. going to go ahead and just bump it up a little bit to 250,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> we want to put our range, our range at two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand people putting away their leather toys. I feel like this yeah. question also won't be that hard to find a general answer to. Like maybe LA, I won't find the answer to, but I feel like there's definitely reports on like, yeah, like I don't know, PornHubNews.com about like leather toys being at a, at an old time, like at, at a uh, a disastrously low level. Or something okay. like that. In, so, in terms of sales? Oh, sales. That's a really good way of tracking it. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even think of that. Um, no, I bet sales are up. That's not, what, yeah, I think so too. Sales are up, but there's also a lot of people that are like, this is gathering dust. Like, you know, because we'll also say... Be- because they're lonely? Out, let me point out, maybe... They're not putting away all their their sex toys. They're putting away some of them. So anyone which who the puts away, ones. which <laughs> anyone who puts away, well, I'm thinking of like a whip, you know, like things that require right. like like two people, things that require no, one only, person. <laughs> it only requires. Yeah, listen, whips can only require one. See, now you made me think of why <laughs> our estimates are totally wrong and no one's put anything away. I spe- okay. this this coronavirus is like a pilot project for technology i think because oh, so you're, you're gonna whip your laptop <laughs> no but Someone we is. know well we know at least i know i don't know about you that people like sex work exists on the internet and it is super voyeuristic and oh yeah good point now good point. i've heard pe- and this is this is i'm in china and i've talked to people <laughs> who say boyfriends and girlfriends in like the ukraine are locked up but they get on they get online and they watch each other so mm, good who's point. to say la doesn't do that man yeah especially now <laughs> okay so what's your what i'm sure someone is putting away their toys but what's your new number oh man hey, we're still saying three you think three hundred thousand people is too low now of number of people that have left their toys no i think i think that the <laughs> amount doesn't change but the use changes okay. so i think Less people have put them away. I want. Okay. I want to say. I want to say. Twenty-five thousand people put away their leather toys. Wow. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. Brave, brave, okay, yeah. brave new world. I, I didn't think about your theory about um, yeah, using it with couples online. I mean, of course, there's well, okay, so there are people that aren't in relationships um to begin with, but those people also might get on Tinder meet each other especially as the the situation develops and get used to just doing more like phone video sex but yeah people... they could they could even go on to websites where women are like dance they go online 
and, and yeah, do and all some people that stuff. need work and they're going to do it online too. Yeah. You're right. And of one guy on the other end. Stingier. Yeah. And one guy on the other end likes to dress in all his leather and whip himself while he watches her. Who knows? <laughs> I do think, I do think the, the whipping yourself mechanism is still harder than you're letting on, but I believe it happens. I mean, we're talking in, in terms of like BDSM. Yeah, you can't whip yourself, but not everyone does that when they have leather toys. Right. We're, we're, only, we're only scratching the surface with whips here. Yeah, this is a really <laughs> fascinating subject. Okay. Well, I, I don't quite buy your, like, <laughs> your decrease of nearly 90%. <laughs> <laughs> I think, <laughs> stand by your convictions. <laughs> I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, almost to a, 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 an um, unaccountable level. I'm willing to go down a little bit based off that. Um, I'd say, like, okay, let's say 100,000 people put away their toys. I still think that whatever decrease I give for the number of toys given away, I'm going to like yep. partially offset that with the fact that I think more than 300,000 people in LA actually have leather toys. Okay. Like, I think it's at least 10%, if not far greater. Um, it, yeah. Especially, well, you know, you, <laughs> you have to consider the movie sets that are putting away the leather toys. Um, That's very true too. But No, they'd be know. in Florida. They'd be in Florida. That's true. Majority of those? The LA laws. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, but uh, that being said, so our range is now 25,000 to 100,000 people in LA putting away their leather toys for the season. Doesn't have to mean that they actually put them away forever, but at this point, they've said, this isn't going to happen yet. And so they're yep. putting it away. It's not easy to access. It's not like they just get it like under their bed and they're like, aha. Okay. So that's our range. Uh, I'm looking forward to find the number next time. Luigi, we're mm -hmm. going to do a, a little bit more of a lightning round now. So this time it's on us both to, to be a little faster on our feet. Okay. I'm going to give you, I always forget about this. I'm going to say, why don't we go north? Um, you know, since <laughs> okay. you, you're, you're both are. <laughs> You're, you're our China and also a Canadian correspondent. Why don't mm -hmm. we go up to Vancouver? Your question is going to be based in Vancouver. Okay. Oh, man. That's so small. Same Where question, Vancouver, but Vancouver? No, 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 no. Um, you're going to ask me the question you have. Okay, yes. Okay. I think there's a good chance this will be pretty high. Okay. Okay, okay here's the question. How many... How many pillows with a decal of Nicolas Cage's face do you think people own in Vancouver? In Vancouver. Um, yep. can, you, can you give me any estimate on how big you think Vancouver is? Because I have no idea. Oh, Vancouver has, I think Vancouver only has. Don't look it up. Th three million people. Really? That's a lot. No, no. The city of Toronto has. Like in the the city proper, I think has like two million in Toronto. Vancouver has less than that. I'm pretty sure. So maybe yeah, Toronto's got to be the biggest city. Yeah. So I think Vancouver only has like a million people in the like Vancouver city. Okay, that feels right. Okay, so yeah. out of a million people, out of a million Western Canadians, how mm -hmm. many of them are Nick Cage? Well, the West Coast means that again they're on the same coast as L.A., um, yeah. which means they're 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 closer to the movie orbit. Um, and Vancouver, is Vancouver the city that there's a lot of sets, movie sets in? It is, right? It is. Oh, Vancouver wow. films, what a, yeah. What a great It has picnic. a lot of filming. That means that there's definitely been at least a few sets where <clears throat> Nick Cage has filmed in Vancouver. True. Which, Very true. <laughs> if he brings any pillows, he has to leave them behind. Uh, um, so wait, how many people, how many pillows, are there how many people own pillows? Let's say how many people own a pillow with Nicholas Cage's face on it. Okay, okay, because there's definitely some people <laughs> who own multiple pillows. If you're going to own one, you might own multiple Nick Cage pillows. Th yeah, this is kind of a personal dream of mine to have yeah. a pillow with Nicholas Cage's face on it. I just haven't gotten around to buying it. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean it's probably a majority of of, uh, of North Americans. Um, so <laughs> 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 Mexico, the rate is fifty percent. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, okay so 
Vancouver, a million people. Um, I'd say like 90% of people, 80% of people know who Nick Cage is. Out of that number, how many people like Nick Cage? Probably a lot of people are in denial they like Nick Cage. Um, so I'm going to say only a quarter of people in Vancouver are like, yeah, I have positive feelings about Nick Cage. Or at least they say that openly. Mm-hmm. How many people out of that love Nick Cage? Probably a fraction of that. So we go from a quarter to, let's say another quarter of that, or a fifth of that. Let's say 50,000 people in Vancouver love Nick Cage. They like, they like talking about Nick Cage. They like uh, talking about Mandy. Um, so out of that number, how many people or a friend of that person proactively buy a pillow for them? This is where it gets tough. Huh. Well, 50,000 is 5% of Vancouver's population. I don't think 5% of Vancouver owns a Nick Cage pillow. Could I see 1% or 2%? That still seems high. I don't think yeah. that... Because I'm thinking about like the people I know. If I know 100 people well, the chances are... Well, no, I could see one person owning a Nick Cage pillow out of 100 people that I know. That seems about right. Um... And then you factor in that it's also a movie town. So people are either movie fans connected to the industry, have worked <clears> with <throat> Nick Cage and are like, this is funny. Or want to get into Nick Cage movies and want to like have his paraphernalia is like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that is not, that is, if they have it, it is not his paraphernalia. That's definitely for sure. No, but they, they like, <laughs> they we're gonna like run into a situation where they like bump into him and like a few Nick Cage pillows fly out of their hand and he's like, oh, sorry, and picks them up and he's like, wait a second, are you a fan? <laughs> you know what, while I'm here, I'll sign it. That's their fantasy anyway. So could I see 1% of Vancouver owning a Nick Cage pillow or something that, uh, you know, is fluffy with Nick Cage's face on it? Yeah, I can see that. Um, but I think we should go a little bit lower just to be cautious. So I'm going to say instead of 10,000, I'm going to say 5,000 residents of Vancouver own a Nick Cage pillow. Okay. What do you think? I would say even, I was thinking more, I was thinking lower than that. I was thinking like 500. 500. So that is uh, 0.05% of Vancouverans. It's just, it's such an obscure thing to have. And it is, I think, more of a joke. And it's the like having something that yeah, a lot is of people paraphernalia aren't funny. Of, right and you know paraphernalia of someone like nick cage is just so silly and obscure that i think people would get it ironically so not that many people would get it would hmm. get a pillow yeah i think it's also generational i don't think that a lot of like senior citizens are getting nick cage pillows i think yeah. um there's a weird breakdown between like boomers who get <laughs> Nick Cage pillows and those who don't. <laughs> <laughs> I like, think there yeah. are no boomers who have no, one no, Nick Cage pillow. The only kind of boomer that gets it is like the main character of her is the kind of guy that would get a Nick Cage pillow. Right. Um, well, even he lacks any kind of humor, I think, anyway. Well, that would be serious. Yeah, that wouldn't be, <laughs> that wouldn't be a joke. Yeah. Uh, that'd um, be like a, you know, okay, right. so maybe you've talked me down. Instead of 5,000, maybe I go like 1,000. But I think okay. 500 is a little, I, I think that, um, you know, in a city of a million people, to think that only a few hundred have a Nick Cage pillow. Well, you have to consider like how many people between like the ages of would buy a Nicolas Cage pillow. Yeah, is Vancouver know? a young city? That's tough. I don't think it is. I think it's more, there's like the old generate like the, the boomers who definitely own real estate. There are the rich Chinese buying up all the real estate. There are the very young who definitely can't afford it. And they're like the yuppies, I guess around my age, who kind of just got lucky and just got in there. And, yeah, right? and they wouldn't, they'd have families in a home. So I don't think they'd buy a Nicolas Cage. Well, like a Nick would. Cage throw pillow. <laughs> yeah, some of them would, I guess. Maybe one or two families would have like one. Movie families. Really yes. Yeah, the other thing is if you're family. a family and 
<laughs> both his and her Nick Cage pillows? That's two pillows. <laughs> in, my, <laughs> in my mind, they're just like throw pillows. Little square sequin yeah, throw right. pillows with Nicolas Cage's face on them. Yeah, not that many body pillows. I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you squeeze it and it talks. Now, if I, yeah, if I said how many Nicolas Cage body pillows are there in Vancouver, the number would be zero. They'd be zero. <laughs> no, it's got to be like a dozen in any major city. I, who, I wanted, like, are those even for sale? <laughs> the customizable. <laughs> like, what, well, there you go. There's, there's something. There's something for the market. Yeah. Is this an untapped market? Is, yeah. Talk, talk to me. Take me Nick Cage body pillows. Free with a leather whip. Comes with a leather whip. <laughs> if you can't can't whip your partner, whip your Nick. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. So what's our, our readers between five hundred to a thousand? Are you lowering yours now? No, I'm staying. I'm staying. I'm staying at five hundred. Five hundred to a thousand. I think that's good. Okay. That's a, that's a realistic Reasonable. range for Vancouver. Like. Uh, I was going to say kinky, but more of just fandom city. LA is the kinky city. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're locking it in here. We have 25,000 to 100,000 leather sex toys being put away in LA metropolitan area. And in Vancouver, not to be confused, we have 500 to 1,000 Nick Cage pillows. Body, small, medium, any kind. Mm-hmm. And that's estimates. <laughs> <laughs> Join us next week to figure out the answers to these pressing questions and to have your new questions answered. If you have a question, let me know by emailing estimatespodcast at gmail.com. I wasn't able to get the estimates Gmail. That would have been crazy. All right, Luigi, any last thoughts? Um, do you ever, I don't know if this is a thought as much as it is a question, but in finding out your information, do you ever go to the annals of Reddit? Like for the for the like Topher Grace Nebraska question, would you just like you could create a like a thread for like Nebraska has has Topher Grace ever Ooh, come through there? That's a that? good point. Yeah, that's <laughs> the census has not thought of that. But you know, I think embracing Reddit is probably one of the most efficient things you could do for uh, yeah, census data. I, I think so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Especially in these times, uh, <laughs> because we're all America has at this point. Who's going out? Although I did see. I was in Times Square a few weeks ago, don't ask me why, and I saw a census worker out, which I don't know what he was doing there, but I'm sure it was important. Okay, so we're signing off. Uh, Luigi, if people want to follow you on on Tumblr or whatever else, uh, where can they go? If you follow me? Oh, yeah. man. I'm going to plug something that I haven't posted on in Yeah, <laughs> what do you want to plug? Okay, let's plug my Instagram. <laughs> let's see if this works. Well, these are census research. Will people follow? <laughs> <laughs>